In his book, A Writer's Life, Gay Talese recounts his failed attempt to narrate the vital course of a Manhattan building over the years. Talese focuses on the people who inhabit it and tells their stories, but leaves the space in a second place as only observed from the outside. In the end, we hardly know anything about the house. Its impenetrability makes it impossible to understand. It is a way to see it, but the house can also be understood from within. In his book, The Things, George Perrick describes a dream house which will host the material life of two bourgeoisies and, at the same time, offer a masterful lesson of living in suspense. What matters is what can be touched, the detail, the emotional proximity to it. In this case, the naked structure of the building works as the rhythm and the key to which intervention is opposed to. New partitions that generate tensions within the skeleton of the house. The interior is about the detail, about the experience and interaction between the dweller and the interior devices. The design awaits the user, the protagonist who must set in motion the sequence of small tricks that are enclosed within. In fact, such a piece of furniture has been built. A cabinet full of sliding panels and oblique planes that confronts with the old layout. There are several reasons to retake what domesticity used to be. It is in privacy that social customs and public regulations are relaxed at the same time, emphasizing on what's suggestive over what's mandatory. We have become so accustomed to the vulgarity of our rooms, to the tastelessness of real estate product that we consume, that reconsideration becomes necessary immediately. <laughs>